In this video we're going to have a look at a test of GhostBSD 13. It's not ready yet, but it almost is, and we're just going to check it out. Right, we're just going to test out GhostBSD 13, uh, based upon the upcoming uh, FreeBSD 13, so we'll see how things work. And I don't anticipate a lot of changes. But you know, you know, we'll see what we get. Uh, we're just booting into the live session, so I will uh, fast forward this bit. So, uh, right, first of all, I'm just going to show you the version number. So, what you name, uh, hyphen A. And we're on FreeBSD Live CD, 13.0 stable. And for those who don't know, um, the stable denotes it's a kind of a rolling release. Uh, here's a look at the menus. Um, no great changes I anticipate. I'm just looking down now. Uh, Office was removed uh, last version, I think. That looks different at the bottom videos, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. And yeah, I think it looks the same. Let's have a look at videos. Perhaps a bit of duplication we're having VLC in videos, but you know, we'll see. Have a look at help, see if it tells you. Ah, okay. It's based on Totem. It well, actually is Totem, just name change. Totem's a good player. It's not a bad choice. Although having it with uh, VLC is, uh, I don't know. One thing GhostBSD never has is uh, duplication. And we'll uh, have a look at files, which uh, seems new. Ah, nothing happened with that, so maybe that's not working. Uh, places look all the same. No change there. And system, I would imagine, is also the same. Uh, I think one or two icons are... Uh, I've changed. That's kind of like throwing me off a bit, but I think it's just icons I've changed. And yeah, but I'll look at Mate, and we're at version 1.24.1, which I think is the latest one at the time of this video. And we'll look at Control Center. Everything looks uh, as usual. Very nice. Right, I'm just going to install to a, uh, a, a like generic hard drive. It's a 7200. Um, see how it performs. And this is on my usual test machine. Right, we'll start the install process. And, you know, if you've watched my videos on GhostBSD before, you know what's usually involved. So I'll, uh, we'll just fast forward this. And the GhostBSD install process is, is wonderful anyway. And there we are, nice and finished. We'll reboot into the installed system. And I don't usually, I don't usually time it, but I'm going to time the boot process uh, on this one. Because I think roughly about 30 odd seconds, I think, is what I normally get. With this being the developer version, I was wondering if it was a bit slower. Um, it felt snappy enough uh, on the live session, so we'll see how this works. Okay, about 39 seconds, which is about right. Right. Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, file system. You can see it's uh, ZFS. And the Z root name I've changed to pool. Like you see, you, you probably won't have to change it, but... You know, I'll, I'll change it to whatever you want, but I have to do because otherwise it doesn't install properly. And there's the top for the memory usage. 
It's not bad at all. And the menus I've shown you, so I'm not going to go over them uh, again. Let's have a look at the system monitor. A little graphical representation. Very nice. There's a file system we've seen. Processors. Uh, system information. And we'll just close that. For those who are interested, uh, for the wallpapers and themes, we'll just have a look. And there's not a massive choice, but they are quite tasteful. Uh, themes, you've uh, got the same selection as always. I'll just uh, click that. And that's not changed, so everything looks the same. And for the update station, I'm going to try and see if there's... Oh, there is. And that was actually pretty quick. There's 14 upgrades. Okay. Well, I'll just uh, upgrade. I didn't expect there'd be any in this uh, particular release, but okay. Let's fast forward this. So everything seems to be working all right so far. Um, restart. Oh dear. It was at this point I realized that my screen capture uh, device, for some reason, had decided to stop recording. And I had not checked it. And away I went, running lots of different tests. I... Uh, Lots of installing uh, peripherals to see if they'd work. All the usual. Um, the printer did work. The scanner worked. Mounting USBs worked. Everything that you'd expect worked. It just I didn't record it. So we have to take my word for it on this occasion. The thing I did manage to capture was looking at the syscontrol.com file. There was actually a, a proposed um, security additions, which I unchecked, well, uncommented, to allow and... I wanted to see if that had any effect on the Linus score. I've not seen this before in the uh, syscontrol file. And I don't know if it's going to be in the release, but I hope it is because um, some of them are pretty nice. Anyway, so I'm going to run Linus. And the usual score you're looking for in FreeBSD out of the box is roughly about 56 to 58. And GhostBSD is about 62 to 64. Because I think they implement a uh, firewall by default. And uh, we're just going to run this to see what we get after the security additions. Scroll up. And 78. Man, wow, that is really nice. That's really, really nice. And in comparison, a couple of years back when I looked at Harden BSD. That got a score of 58. So, I don't know, it's looking pretty good. Well, FreeBSD is out soon with version 13, and GhostBSD, based upon that, will also be out soon. And they are both looking very solid indeed. GhostBSD is looking solid. I think mean, GhostBSD always looks solid, always behaves as it should. It's never let me down. At times when I needed a fast FreeBSD based system with a desktop, I've put GhostBSD on and it's worked flawlessly. I've got six computers running uh, educational software and they're used by children who are home learning. Uh, three of the machines have been running since the whole uh, pandemic had started. So perfect really. And I think GhostBSD is an excellent OS. I think the developer, he takes time and he puts his puts his heart and soul into it, and you can tell. Some people might find the lack of bells and whistles and every upgrade something uh, of a disappointment, but it isn't. I don't look at it that way. I think it's brilliant. I think, I think each release is stable, solid, it's dependable. There are some changes, of course. The overall usability is spot on. Anyway, I thought I'd just test this. Uh, again, I'm sorry if some of the, uh, the footage uh, was missing. This is a shame because I, it, I took a long time in doing this, but I lost it. But anyway... Here's to the solid release when it comes out. Hats off to the developer, and thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.